Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Tuesday, the 17th day of May 2022, and we got Rick Astley looking in down there. Are we getting Rick rolled seriously by the GFS? What is going on? I know you guys keep looking at it. You can't help it. It's out there. It's available through Tropical Tidbits or Weather Nerds or Pivotal Weather. It's on social media right in front of you. You see these hurricanes in the modeling. What is happening with it? We will continue to examine that in today's update. So let's get on with it. Take a look at what's happening out there. Now look, the good news, the really good news, today there's nothing to worry about. We have strong upper level winds cutting up from the southwest to the northeast across the Caribbean where this would even try to get going. So there's nothing down there right now. The eastern Pacific nice and quiet right now as well and nothing coming in from the tropical Atlantic except dust Yes, the Saharan air layer is making an appearance, an early appearance this year. I'll show you that here in just a moment. Now, one thing that is favorable uh, would be sea surface temperatures. And we can see that there's 28 Celsius right there. And for those of you playing at home, that's about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, this is Central America through here, just to get your, your geography where you need it to be, in case you didn't know. This is the Gulf of Honduras right in here. And that is where the GFS is trying to develop our, um, our system, our, our ALEX, which is the name it would have if it were to develop. This is roughly the area that it's trying to do so. So the water temperatures are warm enough, and that includes what we call the upper ocean heat content. That is also fairly sufficiently there, if that makes sense. Later in the season, there will be even more of that, what we call upper ocean heat content. But... Water temperatures are there. There is a disturbance in the system, you know, in the weather pattern. This Central American gyre is going to set up. So there are some ingredients in place, but as I have said in an update long ago, I'm sure, you can have everything you need to make the perfect cake or the perfect brownies or whatever, and it doesn't always mean you got all the ingredients, but it doesn't equate to the finished product. You still have to bake it. You still have to make it, whatever the case may be. And in this situation, Mother Nature has a long way to go. Some ingredients are there, but not everything, and not over the next five days. Why do I say five days? What's important about that? Well, the National Hurricane Center issues their tropical weather outlooks, and they talk about 48 hours and 120 hours, and we don't see anything within that time frame. The current forecast for named systems, depressions, uh, and even PTC, these potential tropical cyclones, that only goes out to five days operationally as well from the National Hurricane Center. Yes, there are private weather companies that issue seven and a probably even 10 day forecast, but gosh, that's really, really stretching it. Don't you think? I do. Five days is it. And we see nothing within the five day window to be concerned about in terms of a named storm. But as I'm going to show you, there's much more to it than just getting Alex out there, all right? So here's the GFS doing its, its uh, Rick Astley, never going to give you up, right? It isn't. It's not giving up. It's trying. This is the 850 millibar, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, 12Z run from today. And it takes this energy that comes in through the Caribbean and uh, develops this Central American gyre in here and winds up the pitch, so to speak. There it is. There's your pitch, your baseball uh, a lot of analogies we could throw in here, but that's what it does. It generates this tropical cyclone, and this is going all the way out 10 days, 240 hours. That's where we end. You know, look at the first five days of this, even the first week. It takes a long, long time, and as I'm going to show you in a tweet here, uh, that's a real signal that it's probably not going to happen this way anytime soon. Now, I want to be careful, as I mentioned yesterday, and not play sort of the hero here that, oh, it's never going to happen, because it could still eventually happen, but it's not happening within the next five to seven days. It certainly doesn't appear that way. Now, the GFS is showing us a symptom of what's coming. The Caribbean is going to be very favorable this year. Water temperatures are warm. The upper pattern is going to be there. We're seeing all this in the different climate signals seasonal forecast from these supercomputer models and they are they're getting so much better so this is a sign of what's coming and you know that is sort of the the bad news here it's coming but it's not going to be it's going to be later rather than sooner all right 
So here's a couple of tweets that are very helpful. This is Andy Hazelton. Again, I pride myself at trying to show what other people are looking at. I mean, it's very helpful. You find the people that you trust that are putting out good information and Twitter and other social media can be very helpful. So this is one of them. Andy, assistant scientist down at University of Miami. This person, this man knows what he's talking about. He's not perfect. Nobody is, but this is a good tweet. This is very solid. So the convective bias meaning that the GFS likes to jump on thunderstorms and sort of take off with it. Note the trend over the last few days. The vorticity east of Nicaragua has gotten weaker and more diffuse. It'll likely keep showing long-term fantasy storms for a while. But, and that's the key right there, it's not moving up in time. And so that makes him doubtful that it's going to happen anytime soon. Now, Andy knows it could happen eventually because, I mean, we're getting closer to June. And by the way, this is the Andy Hazelton show. A lot of tweets from Andy. Another way to illustrate the possible GFS, tropical cyclone bias, is from this link right here. It's a um, Florida State site that shows tropical genesis parameters. The, the genesis was forecast two days ago at 138 hours. Today's 12Z run still has it at 138 hours. It's not moving up in time. But then this is important, it, and this is, again, playing sort of the, you know, I'm going to be the hero and say it's not going to happen. Watch, I'm going to be right. Andy knows better. It doesn't mean 100% that it won't happen, but the real signals tend to move up in time. And I want to add to it, you also get more ensemble support. You know, it's not just one person's opinion, so to speak. What is the consensus of a lot of people? And in this case, the people are the models. Um, there's some consensus. It's scattered and random, but there's not a solid consensus just yet. Moving away from the Andy Hazelton show for a minute, Scott Pillay. I hope I pronounced that last name right. This is also going against it a little bit. The Saharan dust. I told you that I was going to mention it, and here it is. We're getting our first significant uh, Saharan air layer outbreak. Uh, the Saharan desert there, the African easterly jet pumping all of this uh, dust and low-level uh, wind energy out across the entire tropics. This is a simulation of where it'll end up. And uh, the hazy skies later this weekend to the weekend, eventually all the way over to the United States Gulf Coast region. Now, I know, I know what's coming. Some people are going to go, that's it, season's done. We're already getting strong outbreaks, and so you can forget it. It'll cool the sea surface temperatures. It'll do this and that and the other. I know better. I look at that and I say, well, right now, it's going to keep a lid on things, and it does. It acts like a blanket almost, because that represents dry, stable air. But it also represents a very strong jet, jet stream, a, a, a maximum, a wind maximum, coming out of Africa, the African Easterly Jet, the AEJ. And that, when we get to August, will become more moisture-laden, and send these powerful impulses of energy that we call tropical waves into the Atlantic, and then it's going to be trouble. So to me, this is not a good sign for later on. It's good for now because it'll probably help keep a lid on things, but again, it's a symptom that Africa will be active, spitting out these pieces of energy in the African easterly jet. Back to the Andy Hazelton show. It's more, you know, we talk about our swift storm surge, um, wind, Inland flooding and tornadoes when it comes to categories. You remember swift versus hurricane categories? If you don't, go back and look at some updates in the last couple of weeks. You'll see what I'm talking about. There's more to, we're not just looking to see if Alex will form the rainfall, heavy to extreme rainfall possible down in Central America. This entire gyre, this big circulation uh, down in Central America, the Western Caribbean and the Eastern Pacific will concentrate a lot of rain down there, and rainfall, too much of it, of course you know this, can equal problems. So the NHC, National Hurricane Center, their tropical analysis and forecast branch, it's putting out these, they're putting out these discussions here, and this is important. So the flooding potential because of that uh, CAG, the Central American Gyre, uh, could really be high. Heavy to extreme rainfall, you know, human beings live down here. You know, life goes on outside of whether or not we get a named storm. So that's important to note as well. All right. Finally, what is coming? All right. This is important. Another 
again, Andy Hazelton, you get all the tweets today except for the one from Scott. So the Ensemble Prediction Center from the Euro weeklies are pretty interesting. Looks like a couple of more Kelvin waves. What are those? Well, you know, the best way to describe that is like a shot of Red Bull to the system, that everything's just kind of ho-hum, and then there's this Kelvin wave that comes along, a concentrated area, fairly small geographically, uh, as opposed to a wide, basin-wide upward motion. It's a more concentrated area of more moisture, favorable winds down at 850 millibars, favorable winds aloft, but it's fairly small. It's like a window that moves through of favorability, and they come and go, leaving a favorable pattern for a few days in their wakes. That is coming, and we can see that represented in this Hogmuller diagram, and you're like, what in the world am I looking at? As we go out into time, favorable. This is all showing favorable here with these different impulses. Uh, this is the present up at the top. This is the future down towards the bottom, and this is your upward motion patterns. These are these impulses coming across three such uh, phases coming through little impulses, Kelvin waves, if you will, geographically where? Right here in the Atlantic Basin. Sinking, that's what all this color stuff in here, these reds and oranges, sinking and unfavorable for the tropical Pacific. And then you can look at it on a Mercator map where we, I think we understand this better. Green is favorable, red is not. This is where we're going to start looking for activity through mid-June. So I think it's just a matter of time, to be honest with you. The GFS is not rickrolling us just yet, to go back to that thumbnail there. Uh, it's just a little early. It's, 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 it's trying to get the party started early. But it's not a party. It's very serious. You know, these tropical cyclones or the genesis parameters that set them up can cause a lot of havoc. So we got this gift of computer models that let us see out into time. Don't worry about, again, seeing these... Final outcomes, 8, 9, 10, 12 days plus. Oh my gosh, a hurricane over Tampa, a hurricane over Houston, a hurricane over Lake Charles, or any point in between. Look at the five days and say, is it on the National Hurricane Center five-day outlook? And if it's not, don't sweat it. Seriously, we've got everything else to worry about. Plenty of other stuff to worry about in our daily lives. Look at it in a five-day window and you'll be fine. Five days is plenty of time to get ready especially if you are already ready mentally and some you know, physical preparedness. Seriously, five days, if it's beyond that, uh, don't sweat it too much, all right? All right, still severe weather season. Wish I could just teleport out here to northeast Kansas and into the enhanced area. I mean, honestly, that would be amazing. I was out there last week. Uh, just a terrific part of the country geographically and for the magic of weather. Yes, sometimes it could become deadly and damaging. We know that, but it is also... Truly magnificent if it can just if it can avoid people, um, but anyway, I digress. Tornado risk yeah, it's up there five percent. That's not zero. Pretty good wind risk today, and of course the large hail as well. I know a few chasers that'll be out there. Everybody, please be careful. Watch your P's and Q's and your stop signs and everything in between. That's today. This is tomorrow. Less of a risk overall. I bet a couple of these get a little slight put into the middle of those bullseyes. And then day three, um, parts of the upper Midwest, Iowa and Wisconsin and Minnesota, that vicinity. One thing to mention, remember I talked about this yesterday, and if you didn't see yesterday's video, go check it out because it made sense. The longer that this tropical development or not takes to develop or not, the more moisture gets pushed into the lower 48 here, right out of the Caribbean from that Central American gyre because it just kind of funnels that moisture around, feeding into the, um, the Midwest. And as, as long as we get these impulses coming across these areas of energy in the jet stream, uh, or just other impulses, upper level lows, even minor winds, you can have these little areas of regional severe weather issues. Because if it does wrap up and become a full-on tropical storm or a hurricane, it's going to kind of hog that moisture for a time. So the severe weather threat over the next 10 days, I just showed you uh, the next three days, could continue. And in fact, if we go to the days four through eight outlook, there you go. There's day four, not much on five, six, seven, or eight. But I think the longer this takes to develop, we could eventually see some more out here 
beyond the five day time frame. Just something to keep in mind. All right. Oh, I got to ask uh, Kari. Um, Kari, you'll see this update. Can you make me one of these that puts TikTok right there, please? I would appreciate it. Because, yes, I am on TikTok. What in the world am I going to do with TikTok? We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. But I just started TikTok recently. A different crowd, a different generation of people. Um, figuring out what to do for now, I'm going to put a few interesting videos. But once we get to June 1st, each day in the morning, I'm going to do about a 90-second Here's what I'm looking at. We're going to call it What's Up in the Tropics with Mark Suttoth. And it's just going to be a nice, uh, easy to understand, in and out. I mean, me, 90 seconds, good luck with that, right? Uh, and we're going to start the day. Like, here's what I'm looking at. Maybe the top five, sometimes just top three, or maybe one if it's just nothing but Saharan air out there. But that's how we're going to start the day, starting in June, um, pretty much every day. I'll put it together. It's going to go on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. That's five of the pretty much biggest social media outfits out there, right? And then later in the day, I'll do this Hurricane Outlook and discussion exclusively on YouTube and Facebook. CJ will put it on Facebook for us. So follow on TikTok if you love TikTok. Oh, I made my, my AirPods, our, our air trackers, whatever they're called. I moved the desk. So one of these, did you hear that chirp? Anyway, easily distracted. There it is again. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, somewhere Matt's getting an alert that the air, uh, the air tracker things are whatever they're called. Anyway, I'm trying to exit this video and they're distracting me. I am on TikTok. So if TikTok is your favorite of the, of the social media, um, I mean, just pick one. And I will going to have that starting on June 1st. Also working on, like I said yesterday, a new studio. Uh, to just make this look better, you know, and, and improve. We got the crowdfunding, people helping out through Patreon. We appreciate that. It's open to anybody. We haven't reached our cap yet. I think once we get to about 3,000 patrons, that's about all I'll be able to handle because I love the interaction. We're on Discord. I mean, seriously, if you're interested in Patreon, we've connected it through Discord. It starts at $4 monthly and to whatever you want, whatever fits your budget, we're in there. And um, it's, it's really allowing us to do a lot. All right, all right, we'll see what happens. Old Rick down there in the corner, is the GFS going to ever give up? We shall see. Tune in and see the end of that story as we progress. I'm Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.